Today's video is another drawing for the Art Toba under the prompt Wisp. You may have noticed that some of these prompts are the same as the Inktober prompts, and some are not. It's just what I want to draw and or what I am drawn to try and illustrate at the time of the illustration. So not all of these prompts will be the same as the official list. Also, I am not going to touch on the hypocrisy of Inktober in this video. I think there is something much more fun that I can talk about than that. When this prompt came up, I was really drawn to it. Living in the UK, it's hard to grow up not knowing about the will-o'-the-wisps and the corpse lights. They supposedly haunt our bogs, marshes and woodlands, leading people away into their deaths. However, what I didn't know is that it isn't the only name that they go by, nor is it their name given the meaning that I actually thought it did. When you think of the word wisp, you think of smoke, something thin or diaphanous that floats on the wind. However, that is supposedly not what this word means. Wisp actually means a bundle of sticks or paper sometimes used as a torch, and therefore means that the will of the wisps is the will of the torch. They also go by other names, jack-o'-lanterns, friar's lanterns, hinky punk and hobby lanterns. I'm sure there are many more out there as these creatures show up in all of Europe and in some parts of the Americas. Each place probably has their own stories and terms for these beings, and their Latin name is Ignis Fortus. This is a combination of the word Ignis, meaning fire or flame, and Fortus, an adjective meaning foolish or silly, so its direct English translation may be foolish fire or giddy flame. Despite this, it's not known what the Romans actually called these things, as the history of the Will-o'-the-Wisps has been around for many, many years but the direct Latin translation of the original term is nowhere to be found. In Welsh folklore, it is said that the light is fairy fire held in the hand of a puka, or a small goblin-like fairy that mischievously leads lone travellers off the beaten path at night. As the traveller follows the puka through the marsh or bog, the fire is extinguished, leaving them lost. There are many mentions of Will-o'-the-Wisps, Typically, the story follows a peasant travelling home at dusk, who sees a bright light travelling along the road ahead of him. Looking closer, he sees that the light is a lantern held by a dusky little figure, which he follows for several miles. All of a sudden, he finds himself standing on the edge of a vast chasm with a roaring torrent of water rushing below him. At that precise moment, the lantern carrier leaps across the gap, lifts the light high over its head, lets out a malicious laugh and blows out the light leaving the poor peasant a long way from home, standing in pitch black darkness at the edge of a precipice. This is a fairly common cautionary tale concerning the phenomena. However, the Ignis Fortis was not always considered dangerous. There are some tales told about the will of the wisp being guardians of treasure, much like the Irish leprechaun, leading those brave enough to follow them to sure riches. Other stories tell of travellers getting lost in the woodland and coming upon a will-o'-the-wisp, and depending on how they treated the will-o'-the-wisp, the spirit would either get them lost further in the woods or guide them out. Also related, the pixie light from Devon and Cornwall is most often associated with the pixie, who has often pixie-led travellers away from the safe and reliable route and into the bogs with glowing lights. Like poltergeists, they can generate uncanny sounds, they were less serious than their German wise frown kin, frequently blowing out candles on unsuspecting courting couples or producing obscene kissing sounds which were always misinterpreted by parents. Pixie light was also associated with lambent light, which the Old Norse might have seen guarding their tombs. In Cornish folklore, pixie light also has associations with the cult pixie, Colt Pixie is a pixie that has taken the shape of a horse and enjoys playing tricks such as neighing at the other horses to lead them astray. In Guernsey, the light is known as the Feibolunga, or rolling fire, and is believed to be a lost soul. On being confronted with the spectre, tradition prescribes two remedies. The first is to turn one's cap or coat inside out. This has the effect of stopping the Feibolunga in its tracks. The other solution is to stick a knife into the ground, blade up. The foal, in an attempt to kill itself, will attack the blade. The will-o'-the-wisp was also known as a spunky in the Scottish Highlands, where it would 
take the form of a link boy or a boy who carried a flaming torch to light the way for pedestrians in exchange for a fee, or else simply a light that always seemed to recede in order to lead unwary travellers to their doom. The Spunky has also been blamed for shipwrecks at night after being spotted on land and mistaken for a harbour light. Other tales of Scottish folklore regard these mysterious lights as omens of death or the ghosts of once living human beings. They often appear over locks or on roads along which funeral processions were known to travel. So a strange light sometimes seen in the Hebrides is referred to as the Tyne Sith or fairy light, though there was no formal connection between it and the fairy race. In European folklore, these lights are believed to be spirits of the dead, fairies, or a variety of other supernatural beings which attempt to lead travellers to their demise, and sometimes the lights are believed to be the spirits of unbaptised or stillborn children fitting between heaven and hell. In Sweden, the will of the wisp represents the soul of an unbaptised person, trying to lead travellers to water in the hope of being baptised. Danes, Finns, Swedes, Estonians, Latvians, Lithuanians and Irish people are among some of the other groups believing that a will-o'-the-wisp also marks the location of a treasure deep in ground or water, which could be taken only when the fire was there. Sometimes magical tricks and even dead man's hands were required as well to uncover the treasure. In Finland and several other northern countries, it was believed that the early autumn was the best time to search for will-o'-the-wisps and treasures below them. It was believed that when someone hid treasure in the ground, he made the treasure available only at the St. John's Day and set Will of the Wisps to mark the exact place and time so that he could come back to take the treasure, for then he would be fulfilled with the Arniv Valkyr in Finnish mythology, are spots where an eternal flame associated with Will of the Wisps burns. They are claimed to mark the places where fairy gold is buried. They are protected. They are protected by a glamour that would prevent anyone finding them by pure chance. However, if one finds a fern seed from a mythical flowering fern, the magical properties of that seed will lead the fortunate person to these treasures, in addition to providing one with a glamour of invisibility, since in reality the fern produces no flower and reproduces via spores under the leaves, the myth specifies that it blooms only extremely rarely. Alright, and with that I hope that you have enjoyed this little video for Inktober Day 2, The Prompt Wisp. Uh, this particular video is a uh, requested video as well by my Patreon Andrew Riley, so thank you very much for that sir, and I hope that you will join me for tomorrow's spook vid Spooktober video, which will be another video game. So, take care, see you next time, have fun, and goodbye.